This morning we're leaving Alert Bay, we're heading off Cormorant Island, we're gonna head over the way to Malcolm Island because there is a slipway over there and we're gonna put the boat up on it so we can do our bottom paint, do our zinks, do all the fun stuff down below. It's actually really neat because we've never seen the underside of Uinta so we're kind of curious to see what's going on down there and there's no marine lift up here and so we get to use a slipway which we've also never done before. Um, pretty old school way of pulling a boat out of the water but I reckon it'll be pretty neat so we got to get over there because high tide's coming and uh, we should slip the lions. We've been overwintering the boat here in Alert Bay and we actually haven't been out on our boat in months. We've been doing lots of projects down below so everything is torn apart but we actually haven't been out on the water so this feels really really nice. A little bit of a grey overcast day. Um, I think it's supposed to rain a little bit this afternoon but we are not painting today so that shouldn't be an issue. Hopefully everything goes well. Hopefully we make it over there for high tide and we can get this boat out of the water. Slipways. What are they? I don't really know quite what they are, but a slipway, it has a dolly on a track in the water. You attach your boat to the dolly and then they winch it up and out of the water, which means that we have to be there at high water so that there's plenty of water to get us onto the dolly because if you're there at low water, the dolly is already out of the water and it just doesn't work like that. So. We need to be over in Sointula by 10 o'clock this morning so that we can raft up to the dolly on the high tide and then as the water drops, we're we'll crank, 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 crank and up and out we go. Just a quick little motor over there this morning. The current isn't doing too much because it's all settled out because we're near high water and we're just cruising along, coming around the buoy here, trying to avoid the ferry. I'll let you know how we get over there. James calling. Hi, we were meant to be hauling our Catalina 30 today with you guys. Yeah, um, just to, uh, I think that they may be out there. I'll just go wave down. Oh yeah, sure. We're just out the front milling around on the boat. Yep, I see you. Alright. Yeah, just cover there for a few minutes. Yeah, not a problem. Yep. So, we're just going to hang around. The, uh, the yard crew is going to turn up and we're going to get some instructions and we're going to get the boat up on the slipway here. He's waving. We're here exactly at high tide, so the water's as high as it's going to get. I think the dolly is already in the water ready to go and we just need to raft up to it and then we can start the process of getting the boat up out of the water.
My name is Ken Griffith and I have been working for Tarkin and Marineways for about 35 years, pretty much right out of high school. I'm manager at the boatyard here. I've been manager for almost a year now. Um, this place has been around for about 85, going on 90 years since it was first built. Yours is probably the smallest sailboat we've hauled yet. <laughs> and uh, we've modified our cradle to accommodate smaller sailboats because we're getting more and more call for them all the time. So where's the keel at, Skip? Your leading edge should be right about uh, between these two windows. Uh, we've positioned the boat um, forwards and backwards to get the keel just above the four or three cross members that we're going to land on. Just behind the aft lower shroud there. So you think the front of the keel is here? Yes. And then the back of it will be somewhere around the mid, the mid point the of the aft window. And then we hold the boat in so it's touching the uprights. What I want to do is go from the mast yep. to this and back. Okay. And twist it. We want the boat leaning the right way, but we don't want it leaning too much. In order to not have the boat leaning too much, I asked you to get off so I could get on, because I wanted to make sure we got it positioned just right. And then we signal the winch guy to go ahead, and he starts winching the boat up. I'll get you down on the beach so you can look at the keel as soon as it's dry. As soon as the cradle takes off, then the boat is still sitting there, right? So then we have to actually physically bring the boat back to the position we want it in and keep it aligned with the cradle as the cradle goes up. And uh, hopefully the guy doesn't stop the cradle before the boat's dried up or else we get to do it all over again. <laughs> I have a feeling we're touched down, aren't we? We certainly are. Okay. Actually, go a bit more, Graham. A little more? Yep. That looks good. You can keep coming. Yeah. <laughs> the most important thing when you're hauling or launching is you want to stay on the side of the boat that it's leaning towards. You don't want to walk to the other side or else the boat might flop over the other way. And that's happened before. Usually we're yelling at the boat owner, stay on that side of the boat. <laughs> If lowering down the ropes get untied a little too soon and somebody walks to the wrong side of the boat and the boat starts leaning the wrong way, that can get a little exciting. <laughs> be perfect would have been four inches further forward, but I think it's, it's bearing on two really well and it's half on the, the forward one. So. Other than that, it's usually quite safe. Quite boring. Yeah. <laughs> Now as the boat comes up, typically the front of the keel will touch first. And at that point, the guy on the winch, he hollers to the crew on board the boat. And he says, hey, the bow is dry. And when the bow is dry, the boat is locked in its position on the cradle. So then everybody who's on the boat, they look along the side and evaluate the, um, the list, make sure the boat is leaning the proper way and all that. And then they signal to the winch man that it's either good or it's bad. bad then he stops the winch and lowers the boat back down to floating and then we try again. Uh, most often we'll make what we call a twister which is a big loop of rope and we take a stick and we twist it up so it gets shorter and shorter and tighter and tighter and then we block off the stick or tie it off so that it can't accidentally come undone. We always have those lines as a safety but the boat is leaning and wants to fall over onto the uprights, and gravity is the strongest force in the universe. The ropes are kind of just in case there's an earthquake. Gravity to 
decides to do something different. <laughs> it's possible to have an earthquake. And, uh, you know, uh, we have had um, accidents here before where, where uh, boats tipped over the wrong way because, you know, they weren't balanced correctly or there wasn't enough weight on the side or the rigging gave way or such things like that. So there's always a little bit of, um, well, we take great care. And we hope that it's boring, <laughs> not exciting. <laughs> If it's good, he keeps going until the stern of the keel touches down. And once the stern of the keel touches down, we know the boat is resting on the cradle. And we can see that it's resting evenly on the uprights. And, we, and the winch man can see that it's leaning the proper way. Then we can tie the boat up. And we tie the boat up secure to the cradle. a lot smaller than when it's out of the water <laughs> funnily enough even though you see more of it I thought the underside was way bigger when I've been diving it but it just turns out I can't really hold my breath very well yeah let's get some in and we'll put some braces to it to an upright and uh, we'll find something to go up to it Well, that was surprisingly easy. It's definitely much easier than all the mucking around with a traditional travel lift and getting it out. It was quicker, just straight on the dolly, up, down, up, settled away, and here we are. So usually the boats they haul have much bigger keels for the boats to sit on. Um, so they're just gonna get some blocks and set up some blocking just to stabilize the boat a little bit better so that I can work on board and drop the keel out. Otherwise, it's a little unsteady up there. It's a little tippy balancing on the teeny tiny little keel. She's a lot cleaner underneath than I thought she was going to be, which is really, really cool. I don't see any Catalina smiles. The zincs aren't completely rotted away. The propeller is way smaller than it looks underwater. <laughs> and this, apparently this is the smallest boat that I've ever hauled here. So that's pretty neat. They had to modify the crib for it. <laughs> Super cool. Everything looks pretty good, actually. I was expecting there to be a lot more growth. There's a few barnacles and some barnacles on the prop shaft. We're going to look at the prop, see if there's any play in the cutlass bearing. We're going to assess the rudder, see if there's any lateral movement in the bearings. We were thinking about dropping it out and resurfacing those bearings if we have to. Um, but apart from that, we're just waiting for the tide to drop so that we can fresh wash the boat and let it dry out. That was really good boring. Yeah, that was easier than I was expecting. It actually seems much quicker than trying to use a travel lift. Perhaps, yeah. yeah. I know I've never been on a travel lift. Oh, they, they seem to take forever. Oh, yeah. We're just going to go look around, assess things, and we've got to wait a little bit of time until the tide drops and we can pressure wash the boat. Mm -hmm. So my dad has worked here, I've worked here, my son's worked here, so three generations of my family have worked at this 
boatyard. My actually family goes way back. We, my family's from Egmont, and you know I'm probably fifth generation boat builder. And I'm not a fisherman, but all my family's fishermen. So I've lived in lots of towns and lots of places, but I always came back here, and this has been my main source of income for well the last 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> Before I started here, this place was historically it was just Albert's boatyard and people hauled their boats up at Albert's Boatyard and they would work on their boats and launch them and go fishing and stuff like that. And it was always just an exchange, you know? And then uh, Pat Brown came along and convinced Albert to turn it into a real honest-to-goodness boatyard and do business. And so it was probably the year or two after that that I started here. And um, after Pat Brown, my dad actually ran this place um, a few other managers and Tom Trimmer and uh, and then me. So there's been you know, four or five different managers of this place since it became a, a business. The place has been around for about 85, going on 90 years since it was first built. And uh, all these buildings we see are new because we had a fire and it burned up the old shop. It's been an interesting work in progress. When I started here there was no cement pad and only two cradles and they were wood. Um, loaded with rocks so that they would sink on the way down. And yeah, those were definitely different days. In 2016, we had a major fire here um, and uh, I lost my museum. So then I started curating pictures and paintings in the office here, which is fun. Here's a picture of my old workshop um, where all my tools lived. And now I've got pictures. There's that's Jack up there in the corner. That's Albert's dad. And that's Albert in that picture. He was my boss for all of these years. Jack, Albert, and there's Steve with Albert up there in the little blue frame. So there's three generations now of Tarkins over in this place. And Steve, Linda, and Carlene um, are. They inherited the place from their dad when he passed away some years ago. This is kind of a cool one here. This boat, the Western Commander, that's probably the biggest boat we ever hauled out. And um, at one point, the tide was coming in and we had a giant hole in the bow of the boat and the tide was about one inch below the hole in the boat. And Albert walked out onto the end of this plank that was cantilevered there and he's up there checking it out. And somebody took a picture and did a painting of it for us. Oh, that's super cool. So that was our Christmas cards one year. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. There's a little drawing I did of Tom years ago. Tom with torches. <laughs> we just had a repaint, so I'm just redoing all the pictures. Um, so I'm waiting for some more of our Christmas pictures because we do a little Christmas picture every year and that goes out to people. Mm -hmm. It was kind of fun to have a little bit of a gallery. <laughs> noticing a little bit of play in the rudder. Uh, they say about a quarter of an inch play is like fairly normal slot for a Catalina 30. The rudder is a really interesting design where the whole rudder sheath is kind of like a bearing surface and it's just really finely fitted. So we're gonna have to measure to see if there's more than a quarter inch of play in it or not and whether we actually need to drop it out and resurface the rudder tube. Really hard to say. It's like touch and go, whether we go through the effort to do it or not. It might be worthwhile just shimming out the top. Zinks are uh, the tail end of the electrical system, right? Because this is the big grounding rod that connects to the ocean. And in order for the electricity to travel from ground and into the ocean, it needs to give up electrons because the electrons are passing through it. And without the zincs, all of those electrons would come from the prop shaft and from the prop. But with the zincs on, 
all of the electrons that are now leaving with the electricity are coming from this piece of zinc, which then saves you from, saves the degradation of the metal in your prop shaft and your prop. So it's very important to change your zincs because they give the electricity up and they're sacrificial and they're really good for your skin. <laughs> I don't know if they're really good for your skin. I'm kind of concerned. It's now. sunscreen. It's in sunscreen. I think it was time to be changed. What do you think? I think so. <laughs> it's just crumbling away. Well, we're back and your winter is dried out overnight. She's looking really good. The pressure washing has taken all of the paint off, so I really don't think we need to do any sanding this morning. Maybe just a quick quick scrub so that we can get nice and blue. Having never hauled your winter out of the water before, we don't actually really know what the underside of our boat was like. We've dived it a few times and like visually inspected it, but this is our first time that we actually get to go through and kind of make note of all the things that are going on. In the bilge of this Catalina 30, there's a little bit of layer of plywood underneath the bilge. That plywood in the bilge can rot out, which causes the keel to drop and sag, resulting in the infamous Catalina smile. I don't see any smile in our boat here. You can see that the hull to keel joint is nice and tight. You can see where it flexes a little bit, but other than that, there's no separation between the hull and the keel, which is fantastic. A few other things we've inspected was we do see a handful of little blisters along the hull. Not enough that it really makes me want to dive in and grind them all out just yet. Maybe that's a job for a few years down the track, but it's interesting to note that like the hull's 45 years old and like I can only find like one quarter size blister on it, which I think is pretty bloody good. The other things that we need to check on is the cutlass bearing. Um, I know that the cutlass bearing was replaced on Uinter when they repowered the boat about 10 years ago. We had a little feel of the prop shaft when we were cleaning it up and sanding it all off and polishing it yesterday. And there is a little bit of play in it, but we don't notice any vibration when we're motoring along. So that's fantastic. The other thing we wanted to check while the boat was out of the water is we noticed there's a little bit of play in the rudder with our steering. Um, they say that about a quarter inch of play in the rudder is fairly normal for a Catalina 30. They don't actually have rudder bushings in them and this rudder tube is just press fitted into the boat. So when we wiggle the rudder there is a little bit of play but it's about a quarter of an inch so I don't think that refairing the stern tube is going to really eliminate that for us. So I think we're just going to let it be repainted and we'll just continue along the way the boat has always been. Which is stoked because it makes our life a lot easier because basically all the jobs that we thought we were going to have to do turns out we don't actually have to do them this week and we can just slap some paint on and get it back in the water. Okay, so we're going to tape up, suit up and then we're going to spread some paint around the hole. Alright, well, we are all suited up and ready to get painting.
Well, she's eaten up the paint. We've already gone through like a gallon. It's meant to take a gallon and a quarter to get a coat on a Catalina 30, so hopefully we have enough paint. And it turns out our small boat is a small boat. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take long to do when you have a small boat, so yeah. I think we should have it all painted up in less than an hour. <laughs> I just got paint in my eyeball. It's probably not good for it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I should be wearing the face protection. <laughs> Well, we're just wrapping up the rest of the painting. Everything's been rolled once and we're just filling in all the little bits we can't get to with a brush. And then we'll take whatever paint we have left over and we'll do a second coat along the waterline, the rudder, and basically any of like the high use areas of the boat, right? Anywhere where the water is running past it really hard. And yeah, that'll probably wrap up today's uh, set of projects, or at least the painting part of it. But yeah, she's looking real snazzy. So I'm really stoked. Yeah. So we've decided to replace the cutlass bearing because there's a little bit of play in it. We've undone the coupling inside and now we've got to work out how to actually get the shaft out of the way. Because um, it doesn't seem to want to come in. Mm -hmm. you want me to hold that in there? The shaft is not coming out as easily as we anticipated. We've taken the bolts out of the coupling, but they were pretty rusted in there, and it seems like the coupling is well and truly wrapped onto the shaft. So we're just messing around with various different things to try to break it to get it open. Not break it like it is and ruin it, but just break it free from the coupling, and so we can take it out of the boat. Okay. Easy. This is what I thought the whole job was going to be. <laughs> well, we got the shaft out. Uh, it was a little more complicated than we thought. It was pretty fused up into the coupling. Um, but the shaft is all out now. We're going to cut the cutlass bearing out, press a new cutlass bearing in and then put the old shaft back into the boat. We were considering maybe ordering a new one because there's some signs of wear on it, but I think we will get it all specced up, order it out, and then next time we haul, we'll pop a new shaft in then. Because we don't have like two weeks to hang around here on the hard. It also should be fine. It's just a little bit of wear and tear, and it's, we're a sailboat anyway. So it's just something good to think about um, and plan for maintenance down the track. It does cause a little bit of vibration and wear and tear and yada, 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 but you know, at the end of the day, it's been running like that for the entire time that we're throwing the boat anyway. So we sail all the time. We don't really try to motor. And when we do motor, we're just putzing along. We're not really driving it super hard regardless. Anywho, we're going to grab a reciprocating saw or a sawzall, one of my favorite tools. We're going to cut this cutlass bearing and get it out of here, press a new bearing in and put it all back in. Yay! <laughs> So this is our prop shaft, although we may replace it in the future. Um, for now, it's gonna go back in the boat. So we're just gonna give it a quick clean up, get all the corrosion off it and all the gunk and crap. And we are gonna then clean it up and put it back into the boat. With high tide looming and the water lapping at the rails, the grind was on to get things polished up and put back together so Uinta would actually float. So the tide's coming up, so we really gotta get this done fairly quickly, but the cutlass bearing has been reinstalled into the strut. You just bang it in. The coupling is put on the back of the engine. We just need to slide the prop shaft through the cutlass bearing, up through the boat, and then in through the packing nut, attach it to the coupling, put the prop back on, tighten down the packing gland a little bit, and then we can go back into the water. Yep, I put some anti seize on the taper, put the key in the slot, washer. Did you tap the key in? I didn't tap the key in. <laughs> oh, that has a right hand thread on it. Not usually. 
usually have a right hand thread on them? No, propellers usually have a left hand thread. Huh. <laughs> there you go. Now, how, how tight does it feel? It feels tight to you. It's pretty strong. Okay, so now what we do is go to line up the hole. Yep. Where is the hole? Do you see it? Right here. Are we almost lined up? Yeah, there you go. Let's get a little pair of pliers. So the last step is we've got four bolts. Four bolts that just hold the coupling and the prop shaft together. Um, usually there's a keyway or a set screw or something, but not on our boat. So these four bolts are the only thing keeping the coupling and the prop shaft connected. So we're going to make sure they're really bloody tight. They're a bit of a hassle to get to down in this dark little hole, so you probably won't be able to see me do it. Pretty well wrapped up here. The uh, shaft is back in, the packing gland is back tightened up with some new packing in it. It's all attached to the coupling. I really wrenched down on the coupling nice and hard. So the prop shaft is as secure as possible in the coupling. So I think we're pretty well ready to go back in the water, which is awesome because it's exactly on high tide right now. So they should just be able to dump us back into the water. We got to check the packing line to make sure that we're not taking on too much water. Um, but then we should be ready to rock and roll, which is pretty sweet. Successful day here. Well, successful couple of days here hauled out at the boatyard. It's been awesome. How's the stuffing? And just like that, we're back floating in the water. Big thanks to the team at Tarkinins for fixing us up. You guys are bloody legends. An extra big thanks to our Patreon crew. You guys keep this show afloat and we couldn't do it without you. Give this one a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. We'll see you next time. Cheers.